If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glisnerolf, here with another deck tech for you. It's Esper Super Friends for Standard. I actually didn't want to put this video out just yet because we can be pretty sure that we're getting Liliana and Tamiyo in the, net, in the next set in Eldritch Moon. But I decided I'll just revise this if we do. So without further ado, it is a Super Friends deck, and what sort of Super Friends deck in today's standard would not run Narset Transcendent? Beautiful plus one, look at the top card of your library. If it's a non-creature, non-land card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. That in and of itself is essentially the inspiration for this deck. I sort of wanted this to be a budget deck, budget in the sense that it isn't running Jace Friends Prodigy, but, and also Reflect Your Mage and so on and so forth, uh, the idea became, it went from become a budget deck to become a deck that doesn't need Jace, which Narset sort of abuses. Narset's big deal is she goes and gets you more non-creatures, basically, non-lands, non-creatures. Uh, this is why we, we run four, even though she herself is not a true win condition for the deck set this right here. Now, of course, she also rebounds your spells, which will be nice. I'll get to that in just a bit, though. Sadly, we've lost Dig through time, but we have quite a few more good things to rebound. Now, as I mentioned, Narset doesn't actually win you the game. Cards like Obnixilis Reignited, however, do. So, another card advantage engine. This one guarantees it, but at the cost of one life. Does destroy a creature. So that's always wonderful. This one can protect itself. Narset's protection for herself is essentially, I start with six loyalty counters. Ob Zombie over here just actually kills them. Straight up kills them. And then he has an ult that actually does win you the game. So if you happen to make it go on for that long, congratulations, a winner is you. But my favorite win condition in the deck is actually Sorin, Grim Nemesis. I don't know that I've ever actually even gotten into a position where I considered using his ult, uh, even when I got to a certain to a state where I could have. Um, I just keep plussing and plussing and plussing and making them lose life that way, um, rather than going all in with a bunch of you know vampire night creatures. Maybe that's just because I'm worried about getting blown out. Maybe that's because I've never gotten Soren to ten and I've just not wanted to do it when he's at 9, I want to keep him around. Um, but I think that that speaks to a truth about this guy, which is that you don't need his ult to win, you can keep plussing and plussing and plussing, and you can actually win the game that way. He protects himself, he can kill them with his plus and the ult if you just want to swing in with an army of 60 billion dudes. A little bit of an exaggeration, but you get the idea. We run one Gideon ally of Zendikar. He is another win condition, but he's only one of because he doesn't really fit the theme of the deck all that well. Unfortunately, Gideon uh, plays more into tempo strategies or mid-range strategies where it's perfectly viable to just pop him for his ult immediately and just give yourself a permanent plus one plus one to all of your creatures. I'm oversimplifying it a bit, Gideon, after all, can become an indestructible 5-5, that's a good win condition on its own, and he does put out blockers for you, but he doesn't usually end up winning the game. There are board states where he can, to be sure, and I've come close to doing it, but I've never done it. Um, nonetheless, there's a reason why he's so heavily played in Standard right now, just usually not in this kind of deck. He doesn't shine as brightly in a super, super, super control-oriented deck. The next one that we have in the list is Jace, Unraveler of Secrets. Although he doesn't actually win the game for you, his ult, like Narset's ult, basically keeps you from losing. He's also the best card advantage engine that we have, 5 drop and lower. Sorin is a better one in a way, but he also is a 6 drop that makes you reveal it and you don't get a scry. Uh, but you do make them lose life, so his draw is actually a win condition. That's always wonderful. Um, Jace can also protect himself, too. So, 
I only keep him as a one of though, simply because he doesn't actually win the game. Now, that's the end of the Planeswalkers that we have, although I also run a, well, an Oath of Gideon and an Oath of Jace. These are the only oaths that we have in color. Sadly, Liliana did not decide to join the Gatewatch, if only. Uh, Gideon gives you a little bit of protection in the two 1-1 one, one core, white core ally creature tokens, aka these bad boys. And also just gives your, I mean, it makes it where that you don't have to go for quite as long before you can pop them for their ults. That's always good in a Super Friends deck, that's what you're looking for. And we have Jace for a number of reasons. Uh, now that Delve is not a thing anymore, it doesn't help us all that much, and we don't run any Madness spells, although variants of this certainly could. I don't have a lot of discard though, so I didn't feel the need. Uh, that being the case, it also helps to turn on Delirium, which we'll get to in just a bit. And of course, gives you a little bit of inevitability once you get Planeswalkers online. Now, these are our Planeswalkers and their enchantments, their odes. Now, how do we protect those creatures? Or I say creatures. <laughs> those Planeswalkers. <laughs> well, we do this with some wing conditions of our own. Some stall and wing conditions. Uh, scattered to the winds, you'll notice a theme here. Uh, counter target spell. In the late game, this gives us the ability to also pop out a creature. Sadly, it's only a creature with three toughness, but that's fine. We can make that work. It does give us something to do in the relatively early game to keep our opponent from beating us. Similarly, we have Ruin His Path. I'm sure you've caught the theme now. Destroy target creature or planeswalker, and it awakens for four this time, so it plays around Fiery Temper at all. Next we have, and if you didn't get the pattern before, you surely have it now, Planar Outburst. Destroy all non-land creatures. Outburst specifically because although it doesn't destroy our opponent's man lands, it keeps ours alive. Basically, we have two primary ways of winning the game, using our planeswalkers and using our lands. Obviously, since this is a control deck, we expect to have a lot of lands, if we're making it to that point in the game. So this just gives us something to do with them. And I very much like all of these, actually. Sands that ruin his path is sorcery speed, um, although that's to be expected. Uh, yeah, they're, they're rather good, I think, for a f format that's r somewhat slow. It's not as slow as I'm used to having standard. I'm used to wanting standard to be for all the mono blue turbo fog decks. I try to make one every format. Uh, I haven't gotten to this one, though. I will before too long, however. And I'll have a deck tech up in, in a bit. Anyway, because this just gives us the ability to stall the game until our planeswalkers are online and working their magic. To descend upon the sinful. Yes, this is why we want delirium. One more mana for exile all creatures. Exile is crucial because of primarily because of world waker or world breaker, excuse me. Um, I don't want them to keep getting that thing back over and over and over and over again. That's annoying. That's frustrating. Uh, that's sort of the bane of our existence. This gives us something to do against them. Uh, it also helps against uh, Ulamog, although by that point we're probably in trouble against Ulamog anyway. The idea being that if they're indestructible, we don't care. Uh, it is sorcery speed, so we can't do it in response to Avacyn but Avacyn cannot come down and protect her flock. Uh, so that's another thing. Speaking of Avacyn, you'll notice that we don't have a lot that we do at instant speed, unfortunately. We can counter Avacyn, but so far that's it. Now, you can add whatever you want to to this slot that fits the colors, but because of the struggle between the colors that I have, I'm actually including Sweep Away. Usually this is just not as good as Royal Spout, except that this is an instant. Royal Spout would let me awaken for yet another uh, win condition in the deck that stalls the game, but it does nothing against Avacyn. Maybe it's better to have Royal Spout. Go for it if you like. I just do this so that when they flash her down, I can respond uh, in that way. Take that for whatever it's worth. So this is our protection suite. 
These will stall the game until we get to our big threats, and they'll stabilize us when we do. Next, I have some filtering in Anticipate, because you've noticed we don't do anything before turn 2 otherwise. Anticipate will just help me to find win conditions and whatnot in the late game, help me to find uh, answers in the early and mid game, and quite importantly, keep me hitting land drops, because I need a land drop every turn in this deck. It's why we, we run 26, actually. So, with that being said, let's move on to the land base. Now, it certainly hurts to not have any fetch lands, not that kind of fetch land, uh, but we do run... I guess I might as well get to this first. Uh, well, sure, we'll get to this. I have four Evolving Wilds. Now it's not the poor man's fetch land, it's just the fetch land. It's what we have, so it's what we work with. Next, we have our little suite of uh, basics. I have four islands, three plains, and three swamps. You will want to change these up if, say, Sweep Away is not your cup of tea and you want uh, Grasp of Darkness. That's perfectly alright. You'll want to add in more swamps. Uh, there's a pretty healthy balance in the colors that you see in here. I'm not sure exactly which one is most preferable between Island or Swamp. I can make a strong case for either one, but I think that Island is a little bit more consequential uh, because of Anticipate and Scatter the Winds and Sweep Away, as opposed to Ruinous Path and Obnixilis and Soren. Those are just higher curve. Uh, white, all of it's high curve. It's a uh, planar outburst, for instance. Now, another suggestion I have, if you want to add more planes, is Immolating Glare. This is actually a two-mana one. Destroy target attacking creature. Fine, fine. Um, you could put that in the Sweep Away slot. Uh, again, that's just a flex slot. Whatever relatively cheap removal or card advantage spell you want to fit in there, go for it. Uh, next we have, let's see, because of all of these basics, for Prairie Stream, uh, not Port Town, and for Sunken Hollow. Now the reason I'm not using the Shadows Over Innistrad duels is because the time when they are least likely to give you the ability to be untapped is in the late game. The reason for that is because uh, you're more likely to have used, or excuse me, let me rephrase that. Um, I, let me let me explain this by way of illustration. When I'm playing a game, and let's say I drop turn one Evolving Wilds, turn two Basic, for the rest of the game, Prairie Stream and Sunken Hollow are online. If I draw them as my last la as the only land in my hand, I can play them untapped. That's fine. If, however, in the late game, when I need to cast my high-curve threats, I have a port town that I've drawn, uh, and it's the only land, I won't be able to have it come in untapped when I need it the most. This deck abuses its somewhat high curve to basically guarantee that you can have these come in tapped in the early game. Not quite, because, again, if you put a Prairie Stream out, you still need two more basics to have future Prairie Streams come in untapped, so it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, but the idea is that um, you can, without worry, have these come in tapped in the beginning of the game. If this were a port town on turn one, there's no need. Like, actual no need. I don't do anything in the one-drop slot. Uh, and next we have four Shambling Vents. <laughs> Obviously, beautiful with your Awaken cards. Absolutely 100% wonderful to have it be a tooth... Yes, a 2-3. I was about to say a 3-3. Three, three. That's not right. A 2-3 that comes in with a bunch of counters and has lifelink. Wonderful. Absolutely. Um, so, this is the deck list in the main deck so far. Uh, Sands, again, this can be whatever. And feel more than free to tweak these numbers. I've seen some players put in 3 Narset Transcendent. When Liliana and Tamio come out, assuming that their colors are fine for this deck, then they might very well replace Narset, but for right now, the fact that she gives you, with her plus, a good bit more than a coin toss, actually, to hit, seems really good. In addition to, of course, rebounding your spells. <laughs> good grief. I will rebound Planar Outburst. I will rebound Descent Upon the Sinful. 
even just rebound anticipate in the late game if they're not presenting a threat can be sort of backbreaking. Uh, rebound ruinous path, so on and so forth. You get the idea. It's it can be pretty backbreaking for them to have a wrath spell and then a wrath spell immediately thereafter. Uh, if nothing else, that can sort of work like time walk by preventing them by casting a creature. It lets your planeswalkers develop. It lets you cast something, not having to worry about a creature coming in quite as much, obviously. I guess they could run something out and then have Avacyn protect it with Indestructible too. That is possible, certainly. But beyond that, not in this standard. Not usually. Uh, now for the sideboard, we have two Anguished Unmakings. These will allow us to deal with uh, non-creature non-land permanents. Obviously you can deal with creatures as well if we need it to. But since we don't do anything against other Planeswalker, Sands, Ruinous Path, uh, against artifacts, enchantments, you get the idea. Anguish Done Making gives us something there. We also have two more Descend Upon the Sinful for the uh, ramp decks, because again, we don't want to have to deal with anything that they're doing. Worldbreaker, Ulamog, Atarka, we don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, if they cast Pulse of Morasa to get it back, we want them to not have any targets. <laughs> uh, two Duress for the control match, I bring these in against ramp so that we can hopefully keep them off of some early ramp. Uh, that's always good. Infinite Obliteration, same. And also against uh, control decks that have only a small number of creature win conditions, this might be helpful. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell going into those matches, though. With a ramp deck, you just name Worldbreaker. That's a 4 of, we know that. You get the idea. Occasionally you can bring it in against something else, obviously. Uh, if you know the deck well enough, uh, my matchup knowledge for standard right now is not as good as it needs to be, so I apologize for not being an encyclopedia. Uh, Linvala the Preserver helps us against the aggro decks, lets us stabilize a little bit. It is a creature, but that's fine. Uh, even with one or two creatures in, Narset will still hit a majority of the time. Um, yeah, she's wonderful. She's sort of... She feels a little like timely reinforcements on a creature. You gain life, and instead of three one ones, you get one three three with flying. Interesting. That's an angel. That's a three three. But okay. Uh, we have a couple of negates. Unfortunately, I don't have the same art. Which do you prefer? Actually, <laughs> leave your answer in the comments if you'd like. Oh, negate. Uh, just something to bring in and against the control decks, against the ramp decks. You get the idea. Just helps us to stabilize, help us to stall a game. Ojutai's command. I bring this in against mid range. I want to counter a creature, especially one named Archange Archangel Avison, and draw a card. Often this is just cryptic command, but much easier to cast. Gives us a couple extra modes. The four life helps against aggro sometimes. You get the idea. We don't have any creatures to return, however, at least not in the main board. Next, for breaking the control mirror. We have a Silumgar's Command, a wonderful little two-for-one against them. Just destroy their Planeswalker, counter target non-creature. That's often just how it goes. Can be brought in against low-to-the-ground aggro decks too, but the high curve makes that a little hard to do. Minus three, minus three, however, may be what you need. Sphinx of the Final Word, win the Control Mirror. We're set against aggro and mid-range so heavily that a lot of the sideboard is dedicated to fighting control and ramp. So if it seems a little one-sided, well, that's why. Or lopsided, I guess, is a better word. And then lastly, transgress the mind. General utility, I don't know that it's worth being in the main board. Uh, some decks are low enough to the ground that maybe it's not worth it. But this helps us to Again, take out ramp, control, even some big mid-range cards. Take their collected company so they don't get that advantage. Take their Avison, uh, so on and so forth. Um, but maybe there are enough decks that are so low to the ground that that isn't really all that necessary. Then again, there's not much else that we're doing on turn two. So if you want to add that in, again, maybe over in here or for another Narset, feel more than free. That's perfectly all right. Um, and there we are. So my suggestions for what side sweep away out for if you so choose to. Uh, Royal Spout, Immolating Glare, Ultimate Price, 
um, grasp of darkness. Maybe there's something that I'm missing. I just think that Sweep Away is the easiest on our mana and or the mana base at least, and it deals with everything, even if it doesn't deal with it for terribly long. It also gives them a bit of card disadvantage by keeping them from their draw step, which I think is a very underrated aspect in Magic. Alright, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later. If you have any suggestions, feel more than free to leave them in the comments. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.